Good evening. I'm Mari Carmen Aldana, president of the New Orleans Hispanic Heritage Foundation. The New Orleans Hispanic Heritage Foundation is a non-profit community organization whose main purpose is to cultivate and promote the Hispanic heritage. The foundation supports activities that provide culture through art, education, culinary flavors and music. And today, we are very pleased to present a journey to Peru best culinary secrets. And we are here at Tito Cevicho and Pisco Peruvian Cuisine. To kick off today's program, let's start with a brief history of Peru. Peru is a multicultural nation with so many faces, filled with traditions and a unique gastronomy and vast natural reserves. Peru is situated in the western part of South America and shares borders with Ecuador, Colombia, Brazil, Bolivia and Chile. And Chile. Its enormous territory is composed of three regions, coast, highlands and jungle. And of course, Spanish is the main language. During today's presentation, celebrated New Orleans chef Juan Locke of Tito Ceviches and Pisco will prepare his favorite and most famous Peruvian dishes and drink recipes. We are extremely thankful, very, very thankful to Chef Juan and his wife Tatiana for opening the doors to this amazing place, this amazing restaurant uh, in uptown New Orleans. And they are very willing and uh, generously share a lot of knowledge and expertise about Peru and its cuisine. Thank you to our master of ceremony, Isis Casanova. She's a media personality and will share with you historical information about Peru and stories about the Peruvian cuisine. Many things also go to Mikkel Berenger, owner of Global Media Solutions, who is the person behind the camera. Please continue to support the New Orleans Hispanic Heritage Foundation. Visit nohhf.org to learn more about our programs, including the scholarship program that since 1993 has awarded close to 1,000 scholarships to high achieving students. And now please enjoy this amazing Peruvian cooking experience. Let's go and visit Tito Ceviches and Pisco. Isis, a pleasure to see you. Thank you so much for doing this. So now we leave the program in your hands. Thank you, Mari Carmen, and thank you, New Orleans Hispanic Heritage Foundation, for all your hard work and everything you do for the community. Thanks to your scholarship programs, thousands of young people have been able to achieve their dreams. Now, normally, we have this big event at the end of the year. It's called the a Super Bowl. But because of COVID, well, we had to adapt. The ladies from the Cultural Committee of the Hispanic Heritage Foundation, they decided, well, let's do something different. We need to put the face of the foundation forward, but make it fun and safe for everybody. So they came up with this, this wonderful presentation. It's a way to celebrate our Hispanic heritage and teach you a little bit about the culture of Peru. I'm here on Magazine Street. It is one of the trendiest neighborhoods in New Orleans at Tito Ceviche and Pisco Cuisine here with Chef Juan yes. and Tatiana. Thank you, Isis, and thank you, New Orleans Hispanic Heritage Foundation, for being here. It is our pleasure, and I hope everybody enjoys Juan's cooking. I think we will. You're in for a treat, so stand by. Now, Chef Juan is going to prepare four recipes for you in this presentation. There is a pisco sour, a ceviche criollo, also, causa de cangrejo and a mm -hmm. pisco punch. punch. And he's going to give you all the step-by-step -step instructions, so don't worry. So now, Chef, you tell me in what order we're going to do these recipes. Okay, the pisco sour will be the first one. Um, then we'll do the ceviche grill, like you said, the causa de cangrejo and the pisco punch. Now, the pisco sour is a Peru and staple cocktail drink that most tourists, uh, when they go to visit Peru, you know, you want definitely want to have one of these cocktails. Now, for our viewers, what is pisco? Pisco is a brandy type. It's made out of grapes. Um, is this is this a pisco right here? A pisco. I got the pisco right here. That's yeah. the one we use. Oh, it's chill. It has to be cold then. Well, no, not really. I used to get out the cooler because oh, okay. we we save it there. You know, at the end of the night, we put everything away. So I used to get out. But no, that's not have to so be So it could chill. be served either cold or at room temperature? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. All right. Yes. There you go. Return that to you. 
And and how is it served? Uh, what type of glass? Is it like a big tumbler or like a it's, little type of get, glass? When, when you get a uh, pisco sour, normally it's one of these glasses right here like that. Okay. Um, it's nice and chill, so the cocktail also stays uh, in the, at the chill form. And the consistency yes, is important. Yes, exactly. Yes. Exactly, because it has egg whites, and when you mix all of that together, you want all of that to be nice and frosty, so uh, it's... it's Delicious. Uh, right. we, we, we do a lot of uh, pisco sours here, and um, you know, it's uh, like we said, the staple drink of Peru. Now, I have to be very honest with you, Chef, and with you as well. I really didn't know a whole lot about Peru until these ladies asked me to do this. Because, like so many people, what I know is what I've seen in National Geographic and maybe travel shows. You know, they're great. It's, everything is Machu Picchu. And you don't, All right. There's nothing else. There's nothing else to Peru. But I learned a lot. I really did alert. I learned that Pisco is, a, is first before the ceviche. That's the tradition. So if you want to be, you know, honor the tradition the way it is. And also, I learned a lot about Pisco because I had never heard of it before. Honestly, I, I, I'm a drinker, but I did, didn't know anything <laughs> about Pisco, to be honest with you. One is that pisco is a very, very old drink. It sure dates back is. to the 16th century. Correct. That sure is, does. That is very, very old. Yes. And the pisco sour, well, that's not as old, but it is pretty old. It was invented in the 1920s by an American who's living in Lima, Peru. His name was Victor Morris, and he started a bar, you know, a nice little bar, very upscale bar for the Peruvians and the foreigners that went there. And uh, he created this, the Pisco pun, uh, the Pisco Sour, sour mm -hmm. a Pisco Sour. It was very popular. But like everything, there is an evolution. So Morris, he invented the Pisco Sour, but it was a Peruvian bartender Correct. who adapted the, set, the recipe, added the bitters and the egg whites nice. that you'll see later mm -hmm. on that goes here. And that's the drink that Peruvians love today. So I want I want to see the pisco sour okay. step by step. Step by step. So you're gonna have two ounces of pisco it's about there. Dos deditos no así, así, verdad? One ounce of lime juice. One ounce of lime juice. Mm -hmm. One ounce of simple syrup and one ounce of egg whites. Oh, those are egg whites? Egg whites. So okay. it's basically it's gonna be two, one, one, one. Very simple. No secret, no magic, no nothing. That's, that's pretty, I'm not a bartender. I mean, I so drink, just gonna, but I'm not really good at it. We're just gonna put a few ice cubes in here. Not a lot, just a few. Okay. Well, this is where it, it comes in with, you have to have a little The strength. Tom Cruise in you? Yeah. Go at it. You drink and you get a workout. Yes. That's the type of drink I like. So now we're gonna strain it. You start a little low, then you work your way Look up. Look at that! Oh, those are the egg whites that are mm -hmm. creating that froth. So you can get all of that out of there. Look at that. You need to see this because this is really, really, really a beautiful little drink. You know, I don't really know of other drinks that has eggs in it. I mean, you, when you think about drinking, you don't think about adding eggs. Egg you. whites. There's a, there's another drink Look out there. Look at that. Look at that. and frost. And I'm sure it, once whites, it settles. You're going to see the separation separates, you know. The egg whites are going to uh -huh. be nice on top. Oh, it smells good. It has a really strong pungent, like a, a nice pungent, pungent smell. And then we're going to finish it with some bitters, Angostura bitters, a couple drops. Now, for people that are making this here, where would you find Angostura bitters? You, can go, any, you can go to any, it, any store, any yeah, store? any store will have it, All yes. Right. And that's right. it. And that's it, look at that, how simple that is. Piece beautiful. of cake, it's a beautiful drink. Cheers. Cheers. Lo puedo probar? Go ahead. Well, okay, how strong is this? No, it's not really that strong. No? Come on. I mean, do I have to call an Uber? No. no? Okay, all right. All right. Salud. Salud. Well, I can't drink alone. Hey, look, right here, look. I'll have one myself, a little pisco puro. Oh, I, he gives me those, the one that's mixed, but he's going to have the shot. Yeah, that's a little bit. All right, salud, All right. chef. Salud. Salud. 
Mm, it's that mm -hmm. This is really, really good. You know, it almost... I don't know what to compare it to, but it's really good. It's acidic, it's sweet, but it's not overpowering. It's, it's, uh, it's, I think it's a drink that just about anybody's going to like. And anybody can make it at home. And Simple. anybody can make it at home. All right. All right. That is your first recipe. So now we have the, the Pisco Sour, we got that out of the way, and we move on to our next recipe. Correct. All right, you ready to do the next recipe? We ready. All right, so the chef is gonna change and he's gonna bring all of the ingredients and make his mise en place to make the ceviche. It's the ceviche criollo that we're gonna do next. And while he gets that ready, I'll give you a little background about the ceviche. Okay. Well, we are back. Our next recipe is ceviche criollo. criollo. Correct. Now, you, I want you to first explain. These are all the ingredients that are going to go in the ceviche criollo. After you explain to them what mm -hmm. goes in, I'm going to give you a little history about ceviche. Go ahead, chef. Okay. So we have um, this is fresh chips head. It's from the Gulf of Louisiana. Uh, first of all, we try to use you know some of the local uh, ingredients that we can get here too. So obviously the Gulf provides us with you know fresh fish, and we get our seafood fresh every day. So we got fresh chips head that's been diced like probably a quarter of an inch, a little bit less. Chips diced. head. Chips head. Okay. Yes, yeah, so it's fresh. It's fresh. We have tasted different fishes, and we believe that this is one of them that that's the sits best better to make the ceviche. Okay. It's nice and firm, and it's fresh. Look at the color of the fish, and always you can go to your local seafood market, you know, and they might not have chips yet, they might have something else, but the secret is as long as it's fresh, not frozen, Oh, okay. that would be the best fresh addition. Fresh fish. What, it, so it, what is another type of fish? Is it a uh, white fish more? It has a white, mild, firm, uh, you can use mahi-mahi. Oh, I love that. You can use yes. drum, you can use redfish, but as long as it's fresh, uh, That's a secret fresh. You so will be don't use the, the frozen kind. Yes. I mean, we're in New Orleans. You can yes. get fresh fish yes. just about anywhere, yes. Yes. right? Yes. Correct. What else do you have? Uh, we have fresh squeezed lime juice. Okay, no bottle lime juice. Fresh squeezed lime juice. Um, we have rocoto. What is that Peruvian red pepper that you see here? Oh, that okay. we process it here at the restaurant. We boil it, we take all the seeds out first, and, and we boil it, and then we skin it, and then we blend it, and you get this nice, beautiful color of okay. the paste. Then we have leche de tigre, where it's another ingredient to make ceviches. Uh -huh. um, basically, what it is, is fish stock, okay. uh, celery, a little bit of onions, ginger, and garlic. You blend it, and then you strain it. Ah. And you get that beautiful lecture. Now this is kind of interesting because I've, chef, I told you I have n know very little about Peruvian and uh, cuisine, and I'm learning a, lo a lot about it now. So look at this. It's just white. It's mm -hmm. milky, and it's called leche de tigre, de tigre. Mm -hmm. tiger's milk. Tiger's milk. But it has nothing to do with tigers. No. So basically, it's like a, like a, like a stock. Oh. It's a stock. It's a base. Right? A milky base. stock. Base. That's all, all right. it is. Now we have a little uh, fresh ginger also. We have uh, garlic. Pureed garlic, right? Mm -hmm. We process it here too. Uh, we have uh, fresh cilantro, kosher salt, white pepper. White pepper. White pepper. Julienne red onions. Uh, glazed sweet potatoes. When you mean glaze, we boil them here with a little bit of uh, orange juice, uh -huh. cinnamon sticks. We put a little bit of uh, cloves. And we boil that so it's nice and tender, and then that gives that little other flavor to the sweet potato too. Gotcha. And we also have Peruvian corn. Oh, this the is corn. Peruvian corn. This is corn. Look at that. That's a big. Cor Those are yes. big corn yeah, kernels. That's Peru are well known for corn and now, potatoes. I'm trying to think of what I. You know this. You know. Most similar to hominy. Yeah. Like if you have had pozole, that's the that's the same. Similar, similar? yeah, similar, okay. not the same, but similar, yes. Okay. Yes. So like the pozole grain, mm -hmm. if, if you've had that before or homily. Correct. Okay. So um, as you start to, why don't you go ahead and start preparing? Okay. And uh, you always want to make sure. Also, I'm sorry, 
uh, when you make ceviche to make to be nice and cold also so while you make? So keep everything cool. cold. So right yes. here, look, right here, he has Got a bowl with ice in it. Just to keep it chilled. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some fish in here. Now the next step is always gonna be the salt first. Now what the salt's gonna do is gonna seal the fish on the outside so it can keep that freshness of the fish inside. Okay. Kind of cures it a okay. little bit instantly on the outside. Okay. Always the salt first. Always the salt first. Yes. Now we have a little bit of pepper. Then we're gonna add a little bit of this garlic. We're gonna add a little bit of ginger. Yes, a little bit, not much. Now, ginger is optional. I love ginger, um, to know, but it gives it a nice flavor to the uh, ceviche too. We're gonna so, add. okay, so the chef has been making this for years and years and years, and he cooks like my mom. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. So, would you say a little bit, in your opinion, is teaspoon? Half a teaspoon. Half a teaspoon. Okay, yes, so don't get carried away, especially with the ginger, because the ginger is kind of strong, right? Yes, yes right. half a teaspoon. A bit so you less. mix it all up. Mix it all together. Get that nice color of the chili or the uh, rocoto and all the other. Okay, so rocoto, where where do you find that? Um, I mean, if you have it here, you don't have it imported. You can find it here in New Orleans. We bring that imported from Peru. We bring that yeah, imported. Yeah. So what can I substitute that with? Um, some of your local stores might have um, already, uh, like the Aje Maria and the rocoto already blended in a little you know, glass. So, what is the difference between ricotto and just your regular red pepper? Um, well, I mean, ricotto is uh, from Peru. Well, other than Peru, yeah, I know okay. it's from Peru, but is it spicy or? Well, heat-wise, probably it's going to be probably around between one and ten. I'll say a seven. Oh, so it's pretty hot. Yes, that's why we have to take all the seeds and the beans right. out of it when we process it, because if you do it with all of that in it, it's going to be extremely hot. Right. Okay. Yes. Continue. All right. So we're gonna add that, we're gonna add a little bit of cilantro in here. All right, so we're gonna mix all of this together. And now we're gonna add a little lime, probably about, I would say, less than half a cup. Less than half a cup. Mm -hmm. You know what, the, I love ceviche. And, uh, and the best thing is that you don't have to turn on your oven. You can just make it and keep it in the fridge. Yeah. How long does a ceviche normally hold in the fridge? Uh, well, the best way to eat it is in, immediately after right. you finish cook, 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 cooking it, but um, I mean, you can stay in the refrigerator for a few hours. That's no problem at all. But now, I mean, now, me, can I keep it for two, three days? Mm, better not? No, better not because then the fish start getting too soft and oh, it's gonna start mushy. It's gonna start breaking But not, it's not gonna make you sick. It's just mm, not the, cons the, the texture is gonna be, be different. different yes. oh, okay. So I put a little bit of the leche de tira. What this is going to do is going to also lower the acidity from the lime. Okay. That's uh, like a neutral, like an alkaline that neutralizes the lime. neutralizes the lime. Obviously, you want to always taste a little bit. Okay. Put a little more salt in here. He's correcting the salt. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, okay. salt is to taste. And exactly. It's you always, want, it's always you can be, always add more. You don't want to add too much. Always go a little bit under than over, but it does. If you go over, it's going to be hard to correct it. Gotcha. Okay. So I think this should be done. Now how? Hmm. Now the ceviche. Let me give you a little bit of background on the ceviche. So I was telling you that the ceviche is something that has a very long history. Correct. And it's very multicultural as well. And the dispute about its origin, it's just like the spelling, it's probably as old as ceviche itself. Correct. So why does that happen? Well, you know, we have to go back to eighth grade civics class. You know, back then, people traveled, right? So they went across continents and they went across oceans and they traveled to new worlds and they brought back home all those spices and um, lines, food. Lines, lines right. and oranges. There's things that we couldn't find here, right? And then when they brought it back, a lot of the times they adapted it according to the local palate. Sometimes right. you couldn't find, like right now, if you can't find it, you have to adapt the recipe. But a lot of our Latin American recipes, well, they are just a little bit different. So let me give you some fun facts about the ceviche.
The ceviche, where do I have my notes here? It is believed that 2,000 years ago on the Peruvian coast, the Moshika culture, mm -hmm. they were, right? Correct. Correct me if it's I'm a, wrong on anything, because I've been jotting down everything, because I'm so fascinated by this. They prepared a fresh fish that was cooked in a juice of a local fruit called tumbo. So, what is similar to passion fruit? Oh, so it was kind of acidic, acidic but sweet. Mm -hmm, acidic but mm -hmm, sweet. Oh, mm -hmm. see, I had never heard of tumbo. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Moshika, they did that. Then you had the Incas, right? Correct. And they 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 did they macerated their fish in something that the, was like a juice that was fermented. Correct. Okay. Correct. And then the Spaniards, when they came, they were the ones that added. The, the onion yes, and the limes. limes. Mm -hmm. And that's basically the, the ceviche that we know today, today right? Correct. That's uh, more the ceviche that we know and today. And also they were, you know, saying that um, ceviche could be like escabeche. Yes. So, you know, with, yes. as long as it was cooked on some type of vinegar, you know, limey, and so that's, you know, all of that comes into right. play. Yeah. Well, see, I'm glad you said that because uh, in Latin America, you know, as, as I said, I lived in Mexico. I don't know if I mentioned that before, but in, in, I'm Cuban, and uh, I lived in Mexico in a long time. And mm -hmm. the ceviche is a little bit different because it has uh, like a tomato base, mm -hmm. which I think is ketchup, to be honest with you. But they, a lot of the things that are cooked in lime, they're called escabeche. But I had no idea that you know that was an Arabic Correct. origin, mm -hmm. has an Arabic origin, and also they it is said that uh, the very famous Peruvian historian, Javier Pulgar de Vidal, he said the ceviche, but he spells ceviche with an S. Mm. You've seen that as well? Yeah, S, and then the V could be with the V. Oh, or the V, v or a B. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, he said that the ceviche comes from the Quechuan terminology that translates as fresh or tender fish. I mean, that's kind of interesting. Correct. It has a lot, of, a lot of historic origins, like Correct. many things that I'm learning about Peru. Everything is ancient and everything and it is goes respected. Back, yes, many goes years, back yes. and still enjoyed today. And then you you can continue to other languages. So you had the escabeche. Also, uh, the ceviche also can come from the ceviche, also spelled with s. So that's earlier I was saying that you can dispute the spelling. You you can look in different dictionaries. Some have it with a c and some, some have it with an s. s. But it doesn't really matter where what its origin is or how you spell it. Everybody wants to link link to it. Yes. So how long does this sit that's, before that's, it's ready? This is ready now. So it's ready gonna, now. Yeah, ready now. We're gonna so, add some onions. Okay. And one more little stir right here. See the ceviche that I've made before. I had to let it sit in the fridge for a couple of hours no, no. for it to cook. We make this water here, and then as soon as we make it, we serve it. We bring it out. Okay. So, well, so it's more like a like a sashimi. Well. That, that it comes in and play to why our uh, Japanese influence also in Peru from Japan when they came in. They mm -hmm. also have all these ingredients and they brought their own uh, way of cooking too. Uh -huh. So they say that the best way to eat ceviche is immediately. Not immediately. to, not to not let, let it cook with no. the juices. That like used to be way before. Uh -huh. We used to let it sit in the fridge for two hours, three hours. Right, right, right. But now it's immediately. Okay. okay, so now we're gonna so plate we're gonna it. Plate it up. Yes, and the plate is nice and cold. If it can, if it can be chilled, it's fine. It's even yeah, better. Yeah, it's chilled too. Mm-hmm. So we're gonna plate this. I, right I guess here. if everything is chilled and everything is, you don't want that shock in temperature, right? Correct. You have a, you know, go from a cold bowl to a hot plate, like out of the dishwasher. Mm-hmm. Well, that looks delicious. I'm just gonna put a little bit more in with them. Dale, because está en tu casa. Okay, thank you. Somebody told me that. Yes. All right. Beautiful. Nice and high. Just like that. Uh -huh. We're going to put a little bit of the sweet potato on the side. Oh, so you don't chop up the sweet potato. No, you just, just leave it It's a garnish. No, the sweet potato, what it does, it gives you this because you're going to have the acidity of the lime, a little spicy. When you take a little bite of that sweet potato, it's going to kind of bring that down a little ah, bit. Mm -hmm. so it's every, a nice yeah, it's, it's gonna, everything's going to work together. Then we have the Peruvian corn. The corn is cooked, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And then you Call see, me ma'am. I like that. And we're going to just finish with a little cilantro on top. And then you have it. All right. Look at that. That is beautiful. I'm going to put it over here. I don't know if you can see it. That is it. That's what your ceviche should look like. Like a sashimi served immediately. Mm -hmm. That's the best way to have a Peruvian ceviche. ceviche. Yes. Now, I, I, I mean, you're Peruvian. How, about how many different varieties of ceviche do you oh, think? 
No. Here at the restaurant, we have about six different types of ceviches that we. Yes. But in Peru, how many how many like possibilities do you think? Probably out of there's plenty. You can make you no know, ceviches out of almost anything from the sea, basically. Basically anything. Yeah, yeah. Anything. I can make a crawfish ceviche. Uh, well, the crawfish doesn't come from the sea, so. Oh, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> You got me there, chef. You got me there. <laughs> no, like shrimp, you know, shrimp, shrimp, shrimp lobster, okay. you know, things uh -huh. like that. Fish, octopus, calamari. You got all those beautiful uh, things from the sea that you can, you know, make it into a ceviche. Well, as long as it's fresh. As long as it's fresh. Yeah. And you know that's the advantage of living in uh, in New Orleans. We have access to all of that. Yeah. All of you can anywhere, it, and it's not as expensive if you live more like inland that you have to have it shipped in. You can decide today, ah, uh, gee, I want to have a shrimp and whitefish ceviche. And we have it here. And you have it for dinner. So look at this beautiful ship, this uh, beautiful dish, and I hope you enjoy it. Now our next dish that, we're, that Chef Juan is going to prepare is called Causa de Cangrejo. Now if there's one dish that Americans are really going to like, it's this one. Because basically it's mashed potatoes. It's uh, mashed potatoes stuff with either tuna or chicken whatever you want correct mashed potatoes again so it's a, a potato casserole it's the quintessential american pot luck dish <laughs> except correct. it's completely peruvian right correct. Chef? correct correct all right so we're going to prepare this causa that's a really unusual name why why is it called causa causa well causa came uh from when peru and chile had the battle in the pacific Okay. So the Peruvians, the soldiers, the wives of the soldiers, were prepared boiled potatoes uh -huh. and the ají amarillo. Okay. So that's where it got started. So it was for the cause of the oh, battle. Oh, so they, this dish was prepared for the cause. Mm, yes. And cause is causa. causa. Okay, well that makes sense to me because I'm like, why isn't it called potato, you uh -huh. know, the cangrejo? It was for the cause. Oh, okay. Yes. I yeah. like that. So, what kind of potato are you using here? We're using uh, golden Yukon potatoes. Okay. Uh, when it comes closer, like I said, we're going to try to use some of the ingredients that we can find here. Yeah. With mix, mix with the uh, Peruvian ingredients at yeah. the same time. Again, I have to refer to the wonderful ladies of the Cultural Committee of the Hispanic Heritage Foundation because I had no idea, and I wrote it down, but I think I tend to exaggerate, so I don't know if I wrote it down wrong. There are over 50 varieties of potatoes in Peru. Is that right? No, way more than that. Oh, there's more than 50? Yes. Oh, well, I, I, I thought, I, I thought such, 50 there was is an a, exaggeration. There's about 4,000 different potatoes in oh. the world. In the world. In the world. And Peru has about 3,000. 3,000 varieties. Yes. I, I, you know, I have trouble with french fries <laughs> that's the truth so what we have here are golden yuca potatoes that we've had boiled then we peel them and then we smash it like making mashed potatoes oh okay so it, it's just like mashed potatoes mm -hmm. same start yes so what we're going to do here we're going to add a little bit of salt and right here give a little nice flavor to the potatoes some more coarse salt mm -hmm. do you prefer coarse salt yes then? we do why we why do. do you prefer the coarse salt um, so less you know, sodium, sodium-wise, yes, has okay. less sodium than your normal salt, table salt. Okay. Uh, we have the uh, ají amarillo, the Peruvian chili amarillo that we process it here. Basically, that's how it looks before, uh, so and that's how it looks after. Well, it does look a little bit more amarillo there. Mm -hmm. It looks orange over there. Like, right. if I go to the store, I wouldn't pick that because I think I was getting the wrong one. <laughs> but that's how I would ask for it, ají yes. amarillo ají peruano? Amarillo, yes. Okay. Yes. So we're gonna add it a little bit for, for flavor and color, and to give a little bit of spice to it. On a heat value, how hot is that? Uh, that's probably about uh, four. It's oh, so a, it's not too bad. It's, no, it's, it's, it's more like for flavor and color okay. of the dish. And and these and these chilies, they're not like irritants, right? They're mm -hmm. more. No, they're not. They don't give you that like the burning or give right. you like you know. So so pr to prepare this um, the. Uh, chili paste. Mm -hmm. You have to devein. Devein, the take the seeds and, out. And the seeds. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, because all the heat is in the vein and the seeds. So if you don't want it as spicy, you just take it out. And uh, and so do you? Um, uh, do you heat the chili? Do we, you boil the we chili? We boil. We take the seeds out in the veins. Uh -huh. Then we boil them. Okay. And then when they're cooked, we take them out. Then we take the skin off. 
Okay, you and peel the skin once it's boiled. Yes. See, I've never done that. I do a lot of uh, poblano chili, mm -hmm. but what we do, you burn the outside and then you peel the outside. Correct. But I didn't know that you can actually boil Moment. it and then... Yes. And you know the reason that you have to take that little skin off? Because that's what gives you that yes. stuff, you know, like, it's the irritant. It's what it's going to make less favorable and, and it's going to give you a stomach ache later on. You take that little skin off and then you're okay. So we have done, uh, we have added uh, viaje amarillo, a little bit of lime juice, uh, a little bit of salt, a little bit of white pepper, mm -hmm. and then yes, a little bit of um, vegetable oil. That's Fresh, it. what is that? It's vegetable oil. Oh, vegetable oil, Yeah, okay. so it doesn't, uh, it kind of sticks together. Okay. You know? And so it's you, the glue that mm -hmm. makes it bind. Yeah. It's the binder. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to mix all of that. Why don't we put it over here else? You're going to make a lot of noise and our cameraman's going to get very mad. Right. He's going to have a little taste of this at the end too. So, so just kind of mush be. it together. Correct. Right. Now, because it is a potato and it's very starchy, should you be conscious about working it too much so you don't... Uh, as long as it doesn't have... Now, the best way to do it, instead of doing it with a fork, if you get a potato presser... Oh, yeah. When it comes or a like one more. of those potato ricers. Yes, yeah, correct. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. That's an yes. I have one of those. Yes. Maybe I can use it. It's been there for decoration That'll be the four best. years. That'll be the best way to do it. So you can, right now, you can see okay. have that beautiful color to it. Uh -huh. Now, I don't see... Okay, so mashed potatoes usually has like milk and cream. I don't no, see any milk or cream. No yet. milk, cream, no or, milk or cream. Because it's okay. a cold dish. A cold dish. Again, yeah. another dish you can mm -hmm. make and you don't even have to turn on the stove. Mm -hmm. Good? Good. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, a little bit of lime. You always can taste, you know, you, you want to find all those flavors in there. Uh -huh. You want to find a little bit of the lime, a little bit of the pepper, you know, and some of the, um, have enough salt. So you want to mix all of this together. All right, let's. Oh, that noise, yes. No, it's actually... Uh, Miguel is going to get mad at me. I know, the cameraman is going to get mad. That's okay. <laughs> we'll give him some pisco later on. He'll be happy. Okay, so I think this is done. So we're going to start doing now. We're going to start building the calza. Okay, okay so... All right, so how, this is this is the, uh, the, the plate up, right? We're going to plate it up. Mm-hmm. So... We have a, a ring. Oh, how fancy. Mm -hmm. So is this how it normally is individually or is it a big casserole like a Tupperware? You, over here at the restaurant, obviously, we do it individually. Uh-huh. But you can build it on a small casserole. Uh-huh. Do layer of potatoes, do your avocados, do the uh, crab meat or chicken or shrimp or crawfish. Whatever whatever the stuffing is. Yes. We can make it a little bigger, then you cut it on square. And then you just cut and you just take the slices and, 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 take, and cut. And plate it. But yeah. we're doing it fancy because we're very bougie here and we're doing individual ones. So when you have a dinner party, you can impress your friends and have gausa individually, which is, it's just an over. You can find that just about anywhere. And, uh, yeah. So we're going to put a little bit of the potatoes in here first. We're going to make the layers. All right. So we got a little potatoes the there. Basis potato. Mm -hmm. Then we're gonna have some sliced avocados. Okay. Ooh, that looks good. We're gonna put those around it. One more right here. Now we're gonna add some of our Louisiana lump crab meat. So mm. obviously, like I said, we're gonna try to use local products. Right. So Always have, shop local. Yes. So we're gonna have, and this only has this lump crab meat with um, Dijon mustard and a little bit of mayonnaise. Just okay. to oh, so it up. The, there's a, just a little okay. bit of tinge of Dijon mustard and, and mayonnaise, mayonnaise. And, and that's it. Yes. It's, and it's also more of a binder just Correct. to Correct. give it a little flavor, uh, the crab meat a little flavor. Okay, so we're going to put a little layer of this. Correct. That one that's starting plenty. to look really good now. So start building it. Make sure it's nice and packed. So you press it. You press mm -hmm. it. You press a little bit so it can okay. nice and pack. So when you take the ring out, it looks okay. doesn't. You now know. you didn't spray the, the the inside of the ring with vegetable oil or anything. It, it's gonna pull out okay. It's gonna be pulling out all right. Okay. We're gonna add a little more potatoes on the top just to finish it. I am loving the color of that potato. It looks beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just so. You know, if you're having a saint's party, it's you got the gold already here, right? It's yes. your black and gold, mm -hmm. your black and gold dish. <laughs> so basically, this is done. That's it. That's it. So we not even five minutes. Not even. Oh, now 
Look at this. Is this a thing of beauty or what? How elegant is that? Required no cooking. You didn't turn on your stove. How many, uh, what, about seven, eight different ingredients? And, and that's because this is his recipe. But basically, you can stuff it with whatever you want. Yes, correct. And that is it. Now, How do you garnish it? Now, we're going to finish it with a Peruvian sauce. Now, what's um, a Peruvian sauce? It's called huancaina. Huancaina? Yes, from a state in Peru that's called huancayo. That's what that sauce was created. Okay. And, and we what's use, in the sauce? What's in the sauce? The sauce you have queso fresco. Okay, I know queso fresco. Yes, you have uh, uh, onions and garlic. Okay. You have um, ají amarillo. Uh huh. You have uh, evaporated milk. Oh, okay. And you have a little bit of crackers in there to make crackers. it crackers. To, to thicken it, it? Yes. Oh, that's interesting. That's not the secret, correct? Do you want to taste this? You have a little taste. Okay, I'm going to taste it. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, I'm. Mm -hmm. Breaking all your bottles here. Okay. Ooh, that's good. It's not, it's not like heavy. It's just a very, I don't know how to describe it. It's just a very, it's on the sweet side. Mm -hmm. It's savory, but it's not overpowering. So if this has a lot of flavor, this is not going to take away no. from that. No. This so is we, good. This is very good. We're going to put a little bit on top, like this. Put this over here. Mm-hmm. You just kind of. And just let it drink. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like so. Yeah, that That's is a it. lot of recipes to my repertoire today. <laughs> Let me tell you, anything that doesn't require a whole lot of cooking and it's fast to make. You know, one of the weird things that when I came back to the U.S., people started doing a lot of meal preps. Correct. And nobody used to do that. And all of a sudden, like, they cook on Sunday and they cook for the entire week. I've never heard of that. But this is one of those things you can do that. You can cook this on Sunday and maybe have chicken, for mm -hmm. example, and you can make it and have the, re you know, for the entire week. And it's healthy. You saw how healthy it is. It's light, especially in the summertime. It's not just something that's going to sit there and make you feel like bloated, but it's very, very healthy. Now we're going to finish it with some um, chopped eggs. Oh, more eggs. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. a little bit for garnish. It's boiled eggs that are Boil. chopped. Mm -hmm. Now we have obviously our Peruvian black olive called botija. Man, in Peru you really do have everything all, all is kind so of stuff different. On, yes. I need a visit Peru. Now this this dish is it a ceremonial dish? I mean, it's on special occasion. Is this what you? No, 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 not at all. So, so we, it's we, a Sunday we can make, dinner. We can make this every day during the weekend family together you know and see because when I look at it I see something that is so elegant that I would have it at a dinner party and not necessarily like I would treat myself every day to something like this but it's so simple that you could now over here we're gonna gonna just garnish it what is this? we got some microgreens oh look uh, how pretty oh that a, is so darling to give a little color and we're gonna put a little bit of this like on top i mean you don't have to do you but, get you know. a lot of your your ingredients from local yes yes i try to use the locals you know because uh, we all need the support we support you know? one another yes absolutely correct. especially now nowadays i mean we have to think about our restaurants and our distributors yes. and uh you know we everybody's hurting but we can help one we another. all need to support each other yes so what do you now, have here? and with to finish it we have a salsa criolla what is make Similar to a pico de gallo in Mexico. I see that, yeah, pico right? de gallo. But over here we have the julienne uh, red onions, diced tomatoes, chopped cilantro, lime juice, a little bit of uh, olive oil, and salt, and that's it. Okay. Mix all of this together. Very simple, refreshing. Just a little side thing for the dish. I'll put it right there. Just build it right there. Yeah, Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Correct. And we'll put a little more onions. And, and that's it. Done. Okay, so that's it. Look how simple this is. So we already did a couple of recipes recipes for you. Mm -hmm. So see how simple this is. We already uh, did a couple of recipes. We did the pisco sour. We did the ceviche criollo. Ceviche criollo. And now, now the causa de the calza. Calza. I got to try it. Go I ahead. have to try this because go it, ahead. I mean, I almost hate to disturb it because it's so beautiful. Come no, come, come on. on. Go, ahead. go ahead. All right. I'm sorry, chef. You're an artist. This is a masterpiece and I got to try this. 
All right. Mmm. Bottoms up. Mmm. This is good. This is really, really good. Ooh. You know, I could sit here and eat it all day. Do we need me to finish this? Let's just give them the recipe and not finish anything. I got to sit here and eat it with you. Mm, that is wonderful. Well, great. You really do, do need to download this recipe. I'm sorry if I'm talking and eating, but I can't help stop talking. We'll be right back with another recipe. All right. Our last and final recipe is a pisco punch. We started with a drink, we had two dishes, and now we're ending it with a pisco punch. Pisco punch. Now, let me give you a little bit of history of the pisco punch. When the Bank Exchange and Billiard Saloon opened up in San Francisco back in 1853, they served a lot of liquors. Mm -hmm. They were very avant-garde. Pisco was one of them. And the owner, Duncan Nicole, he dis he's the one that created the Pisco Punch. Correct. It was very favorable. It, people loved it. But then came Prohibition. And with the Prohibition, they closed its doors. And the, the recipe sort of just went along with the owner. It wasn't passed down. But people have been replicating this throughout the years. So Chef Juan is going to give us his recipe of peaceful punch. Correct. So what we have here, uh, we infuse our own piscos in-house to make different cocktails. The one we're using today is an infused pisco with pineapple, if you can see right there. Okay. So we got. So pisco is not just pisco itself. You can have different varieties of pisco. Uh, we actually have pisco flights with different flavors okay. of, of pisco in here. So we have two ounces of pisco. Well, let me measure it first to make sure we have two ounces. Two ounces of pisco. One ounce of... Now this is not simple syrup, it's turbinado simple syrup. Now what is turbinado? It's uh, almost like a raw sugar cane sugar. Oh, is yeah. it molasses? Hello, molasses? It's dark, it? yes, it's dark, dark? yes. Okay. We have a uh, half an ounce of lime. We have orange bitters. Bitters. We're gonna have five drops. And we're gonna add about three ounces of pineapple juice. And that's it. Another mm -hmm. very easy recipe. And I can easily see this like at, uh, you know, baby showers or any type of little, you little can, stuff. And you can make batches. And if you, you can like. make batches. You can mm -hmm. make, just keep them in a the right? Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll put lots of ice. More. Pisco is such a big drink in Peru that I read somewhere that you even have one day that's like the big celebration. We have a Pisco Sour Day, we have our Chicano Day, where it's another Peruvian cocktail. Yes, like. Oh, we so have you have more than one day celebrating Pisco? Yes. yes. Oh, see? As you can tell, the chef has really great guns for shaking all that Pisco. Oh, this one you drink in a tall glass. Yes. Okay. Pine glass. Look perfectly. All right. Serve. Then we're gonna garnish it with a piece of pineapple, piece of pineapple. a chunk, uh -huh. and a spear of a pineapple just to give it a nice little ah, color. To remind you, to mm -hmm. let you know what you're drinking. You know, that's what's in there. So oh, look how beautiful that looks. That's so it. Go right in there, and that's it. Then you have your pisco punch. That is the pisco punch. As simple as that. Let me just recap some of the ingredients. You have the pisco that is infused with pineapple. Mm -hmm. You have a special, you have the bitters. Orange bitters. You have lime juice. Lime juice. You have, what's Turbinado. this called? Turbinado. Turbinado. Which is the sweetener. That's mm -hmm. basically, that's the sweetener. Because everything, pisco, you have the additives that's usually the sour part and the sweetener part. Correct. And, and then you what have else? pineapple juice. And the pineapple juice. Yes. And then you just garnish it to make it good. Mm -hmm. I, and I would share this with you Chef, but I think this is so beautiful. I'm taking this for myself. <laughs> Salud. Go ahead. Oh, that is good. It's it's a lot more citrusy mm -hmm. than I expected. It's not like a pina colada because a pina colada is super so sweet, sweet. Mm -hmm. and it's heavy going down. But this is very very refreshing. So refreshing that you I, th I think you have to uh -huh. remind people that pisco is in it because they would just you'd be surprised. Yeah, they keep. They think it's cupina <laughs> and they start drinking it all day and then get a little happy. But this is very good. This is the peaceful Pico punch. punch. Yes. So that's really about it. Those recipes can be made available and will be made available in Tito's Ceviche and Pisco, Pisco Cuisine's website. website. 
So you don't have to worry if you didn't copy everything down, you can still upload or download those recipes and you can make them at home. I really would encourage, right? Correct. Encourage everybody to try it and then come out and try it here and compare your recipe to Chef Juan. Right. So I hope you have enjoyed all the dishes and the, the cocktails that we prepared for you today. It has been an honor and a joy for me to be able to be here to meet you, well, thank you. Chef Juan, and your lovely wife who doesn't want to be on camera. Next time we're going to yes, we're next time force her. yeah, we'll will we'll, we will. And thank you so much for giving us a little history lesson about your culture because it's a very old and rich culture. Thank you. Uh, also, a big thanks goes out to the ladies of the culture committee of the New Orleans Hispanic Heritage Foundation. And that is Luz Caputo, Veronica Lynn, have Mari, uh, Maria Leon Vallejo, Mari Carmen Aldano, and the assistance of the Foundation's Executive Director, Belinda Flores Chinchillas. Thank you so much, Chef Juan, and to your lovely, lovely wife who doesn't want to be on camera, thank you for letting us invade your restaurant today, and thanks to the New Orleans Hispanic Foundation. But most of all, thank you. Thank you for all the support that you have given us throughout the years and continue to give us. On behalf of the New Orleans Hispanic Heritage Foundation, hasta la próxima.